send me the details and I'll fill it in. And he said, but I'm barely now because I'm going to live with my mum in Jamaica to, you know, I've got um, a studio I've made over there on the Metune in Jamaica. I was like, really? I was like, mm, okay, I don't know if I'm going to hear from So I Skyped him and he Skyped me back. He said, where's the questions? So I did it and he did it. You know, it was like, those stories are just incredible, like all the time. Even yesterday, myself and Ebony was in here somewhere, uh, we went to One Extra to get Trevor Nelson's signature on some of the books. So we called Trevor, couldn't get in, he's called me back, and I was like, we're around the corner. We get in, he gets in the car, we drive around the corner, and it just chucks it down with snow. And we look so ghetto, <laughs> right? Because we are on the street, right? Oh, what's the name of the street where we're on Radio 1 is again? Great, so we're on Great Portland, right? And it's chucking it down with snow. Now, you will remember this. When you used to pull up with your van and you open the back, right? And you're there with all your rhythms and there's people gathering around trying to get them before you get in the shop with them. So there's me and Ebbs with the back of the car open and Trevor sitting inside. We're running, running around back and forth trying to sign all this. And Trevor also used to work for Jazzy, and I can't remember who else he worked for, um, selling records, and we were just reminiscing for about three quarters of an hour about the same, same thing. I mean, a lot of people from up here would have come down to Bluebird. I used to work for Lightning, I used to sell to uh, Don Christie. Yeah. 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 Way, 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 way. I, 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 <coughs> I don't forget you sold me as well. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Do you know the person I really want to see? I want to see Winston. Where's Winston? I thought he was going to come. I haven't seen Winston for years. Me and Winston used to argue so much. Dave, I'm coming down to London. Hold me a box of whatever. I'm like, oh my God, Winston. Man. Okay. Winston, he told me to say hi to you, but he couldn't make today because he had to go to a funeral. So uh, okay. he, he, that's the reason why. But one thing I will say, for years, when you was working at Lightning, what we didn't realise that we were speaking to each other all the time was cracking jokes and everything. I says, Dave, what you got? Give me the record. Da -da 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 -da. Didn't know. I he knew me as Tony. I knew him as Dave. And then I think it was about six months ago we was talking about music and record shops. And then he says, he used to work at Lightning. I says, Lightning. Hang on a bit. Are you, hang on a bit, are you Dave that you used to work at Lightning? And he says, are you Tony at Summit? I said, flip with that. So, that's typical me and I'm going <laughs> So once we decided to put the book together, it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? Once again, Lindsay to the rescue. He said, we're never going to be able to get all these people. So, what we will do is we'll put together a questionnaire. And it started off with about six questions, and it went up to, I think it was eight or whatever it was. And every time somebody answered, what we then ended up with was a difference of the questions that we could juggle around and end up asking people. Um, and eventually, uh, we got to what we got, and we just carried on. And then it, at some point, we go, you know what, we've got to stop. I think when we realized that we needed to stop was when... Patrick, the um, publisher, came in and it was like, okay, this isn't a pipe dream no more because we were going to do it ourselves. And he came in and said, yeah, I'll do it. And the reality then became, you know, it, it became. So what we do now, apart from doing things like this, um, we go to school, uh, colleges and universities and give talks. Now, a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I went to a college in Lewisham and I kid you not, there's nearly 200 young people in the room hanging on to every single word that me and Lindsay said. You know, um, I've got two grandkids and a son, all right? And there's kids there that you have to relate to. Now, Lindsay works every day at MTV. I DJ all the time. And what you have to do is you have to work out music that they know and play music that they think they know, but they don't, i.e. play a record that has a sample. So if you play Man Buzzing with 50 cents and you play New Shoes, they connect with you, yeah? Then you can go on from there. Lindsay, I mean, like, apart from doing this book, is like, they like bowing down because Lindsay was the one who created MTV Bass, yeah? Most people don't know that, yeah? So he created MTV Bass. I mean, they gave him a round of applause. And of course, we then had them eating out of their hands. Now, what we're doing is going from school, from university 
to university, college to college, spreading the word because we're going to um, media classes and trying to get this book bought in and then show these people that there is a career with this because people like me, my dad said, not a chance. You can tell my parents are from Antigua and only a couple jobs you can do. 